One very long-awaited feature in View 8 uh, is the new support for normal mapping. I've imported this low-resolution uh, dinosaur object from ZBrush. And uh, depending on uh, certain file formats, in this case, uh, what we have is material. Uh, there's a few problems with it. It just needs to be changed. Uh, so what we can do is take the transparency, uh, which is set to 100%, just turn it down to zero. Uh, the highlight color is set to a default value of black, uh, which happens when you reset a material. I'm going to set that to white for now. And the color map is showing correctly. Uh, when you're using the automatic mapping mode, uh, when you have an object that has a UV coordinate, uh, texture map, it will automatically uh, line up correctly. Uh, so let's take a look at a render of this uh, really low resolution object. Uh, first I'm going to edit the object and uh, by default the smoothing mesh is set to uh, 60. So I've got it set to 89 degrees and then the dynamic subdivision will increase the quality uh, and subdivide the mesh. Well, I'm going to turn that off for now. And let's just take a look at just the original model. So overall, not very interesting. Uh, not a whole lot to it. Uh, if we take a look at the wireframe, uh, we can see how low of a resolution uh, the mesh is. So now let's go and set up the normal map. I'm going to go into the material and I'm just going to edit the function. And we're pretty much going to do everything within the function editor and not really worry about uh, any of the other settings because a lot of them uh, really become null uh, once we have this connected. And I just deleted two of those nodes because I had already added them in. So what we're going to do is right click and go to add output node. And we have normal mapping as an option uh, as, long, as well as the displaced direction. So we're going to add in the normal mapping node. We're going to go back and we're going to add in the displaced direction. I also want to note, uh, if the object does not have a UV coordinate texture, uh, this won't work. Uh, if you're using view objects, you will need to bake them first in order for them to have uh, an embedded UV texture map. So now what we need uh, is the normal map. So I'm going to go over here to the left and add in a texture map and set it to projected texture map because I had the color map selected first, it automatically uh, duplicated it. So I'm just going to go ahead and load in my normal map. And now this is a tangent space map, but the output is an RGB and we have vectors uh, to connect it to. So what we need to use is one of the other new nodes. We right click and go to add math node under vector operations there's an RGB to normal. Uh, technically, I think this should be under conversion with the rest of the uh, conversions, but it is under vector operations. Uh, if it doesn't get moved, then check the conversions folder. Uh, but RGB to normal. And then what we can do is connect this to our map, take the normal map vector, connect it to the RGB to normal conversion. Same thing with the displacement. And now what we're just going to have uh, at the moment is basically just a bump defined uh, by this map. Uh, so we do need to have some sort of information uh, connected to the bump and the displacement. And what we're going to use is a constant number of just zero. So we can connect both the bump and the displacement to it. And it looks like, <laughs> at the moment, 
go ahead and zoom in for a sec. It's not allowing me to connect it. Uh, so I'm just going to select that output and then after having that constant selected, click the constant, which will automatically connect it. Uh, so if you run into that problem, you can just select the output and then add the node. Now once this is set up and we see normal map, uh, we could also import the normal map uh, directly through the interface uh, to kind of set this up automatically. But personally, I like to just go into the function editor, add a couple of nodes. Uh, but what we can see is the depth is grayed out for the bump. Uh, we still have the ability to use displacement if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go back and turn on a little bit of highlight just so we have some more interaction with the normal. And let's go ahead and just take a look uh, without setting what would be a displacement map. So now we can see the specular value really bringing out uh, the normal uh, that's now connected to the bump output and basically controlling the bump output, although we can still connect uh, other nodes to it. And depending on the creation of the normal and the direction uh, that you're used to using or that you have on hand, you may need to flip uh, some of uh, the color directions. But first let's go ahead and uh, connect another map. Uh, so we're going to go back into the function and what I want to use is the map that I've generated for the displacement to connect to the bump. Uh, since we basically have a bump channel now from the normal, uh, we don't need a bump map. So I'm going to load in that texture. And I do want to note that you do want to make sure that you have bilinear mode set for the interpolation type, um, really to smooth things out and make sure there isn't any pixelation, especially with low resolution maps. So I'm going to connect the bump to the grayscale output of the displacement map and the displacement output uh, to the map. And this will give us a little more uh, control and depth to the overall model. Now I'm going to go back and do one more thing, uh, which is to add one more map, and that's my uh, diffusion map that I'm going to connect to the highlight variation. So this is my diffusion map. I'm going to connect this to the highlight, to the grayscale output, and now we can increase that amount and adjust the global highlight uh, controlled by the variable highlight. Uh, once we connect to the highlight output uh, that's there by default, it'll automatically turn on the variable highlight. Uh, so let's take a look with these settings. So now we can see the interaction between uh, the diffusion map and also that new bump slash displacement map, uh, although we're not actually displacing the object. Uh, so we still see some polygons showing up, and rather than using displacement, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the dynamic subdivision. I'm going to set the quality boost to 0.5, uh, which should be enough to subdivide it properly. Uh, the closer the camera is to the object, the more the subdivision is increased. Now, one problem with having the bump set it up the way it is, is that we might be taking away from uh, some of the depth uh, by pulling it in. So if we want to force an extension uh, what we can do is add in a filter, and I'm just going to connect that bump and the displacement to the filter. And now we can go ahead and change this filter. Uh, one thing we could do is, just using the standard filter, add new key point, just click, and then add new key point. And we would want the point to be set at negative 1 on the x and 0 on the Y. Uh, so that way the map's going to start at that higher range. 
the only problem is uh, we don't really have a lot of depth and since there's no way to control it this might not be the best way. Uh, so what we can do is use a map filter. Uh, the lower value would be negative 1, upper value 1, which is our input. And we want to convert that to something a little higher. So our lower, set it to 0, which is the same as that filter before, exact same setup, but now we can increase the upper value in order to uh, increase that total displacement. Uh, so going a little bit beyond the normal map. Now the only problem with that is what I've done uh, is kind of screwed up the positioning of the map. Granted, uh, there were a few seams uh, just because the output map uh, was a little too close to the uh, polygon edges. Uh, but we can also use a displacement. Uh, so let's go back and just get rid of this map filter. Connect the displacement. So we can also use displacement mapping with this. And we could add the bump depth uh, to the surface as well. Uh, we have a smoothing amount we could set. And the force extension is going to be a little too high at this point. Uh, we're going to see a very blobby object uh, once I uh, purge the memory. And we get to take a look at a refreshed version. And we ended up with a lot of tearing uh, and some different issues because of that. Uh, if we set it to displace outward only, and we don't want it to go in, uh, we're really going to notice a very blobby object, but we shouldn't notice uh, some of those tears. And all we need to do is reduce the extension amount. Uh, as you can see, we are going a little bit beyond the map, which is why we can see uh, some of those distortions. But that might also be caused just by the color map. Uh, so what we can do is take the force extension and set it to 0 0.05. And we're only going to displace outward. And there's still a bit of tearing on the mesh. Uh, that could be call, caused by the dynamic subdivision. So we'll go ahead and just turn that off for now. And see how the preview looks. And the preview render looks alright. Uh, so it might be related to the dynamic subdivision. But the full render is still kind of messed up. Uh, so we might need to just reduce uh, the amount. I'm going to turn off the reevaluate material uh, after displacement because it's being controlled primarily by the normal map. And it looks like this really isn't going to work for this model. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the displacement mapping and we're just going to stick uh, with that bump. Now we're not noticing the influence we had before. If we turn it back on, change the depth, uh, and trigger it, see if we can get uh, that to show up. Uh, it's not quite refreshing. So we might need to change those internal bump outputs, and then we can turn it off. So once the bump depth is set to 1, and the depth is set back to 1, uh, you might need to close the material editor in order to get the bump depth to show up after adding the bump, but uh, now it's going to work correctly. Uh, so still with just that lower resolution, uh, but I'm going to turn back on the dynamic subdivision. And let's take a look at changing the direction of the normal. Well, because the normal is a vector, uh, first thing I'm going to do is add in a connectable constant vector. So constant node, connectable constant, constant vector. And connect 
the normal mapping output and the displaced direction output to this constant vector. This way I can connect that node uh, to these and have a link where I can make some modifications and not have to connect multiple outputs uh, over and over again. Uh, so first thing we need to do is break this down. Uh, so we're going to add in uh, math node vector operation and start with decomposer 3. What this is going to do is take the vector and break it down into the three number outputs, x, y, and z. The next is going to be math node vector operation, composer 3. What this is going to do is combine those three numbers back into a vector. So what we can do is connect x and z to z and y to y. If we wanted to uh, swap one of these entirely, uh, then we could just reverse those connections. One thing I like to do when I'm working uh, with such a close node setup is to add in a connectable constant number and then I'm just going to copy and paste uh, to make a few copies of this and we're going to set it up as x, y, and z and then just connect accordingly. In this way we also have uh, some additional control. Now if we wanted to swap, like I was saying before, uh, let's go ahead and switch and take the y and connect it to the z and the z to the y. So that's going to modify uh, the displaced or the normal direction. So now you can really see uh, a fairly large difference. Uh, but that's really more of a total reversal rather than inverting. Uh, so if you need to invert an axis, we'll just go ahead and reconnect these back where they were. If we select the connection on the Y, and we're going to uh, go ahead and reverse the Y, uh, which is going to be the green, and add in a filter, having it set to opposite negative X. Uh, what this acts as is a reversal. And it will basically flip the direction uh, that it's traveling. As we can see, when we look at uh, the main output, uh, the lighter side is on the right. When we look at the opposite, it's on the left, uh, with a slight offset. Uh, so we could also do this on the X. So if we wanted to flip the X or the Z, uh, really you can modify it however you want. You could see at this point swapping it or flipping it turn it the wrong way. And that was probably, uh, let's go ahead and swap out the Y, or delete that on the Y. And it looks like that was because of the red, uh, which is going to be the x-axis. Uh, so you can go in and fine-tune, depending on the normal you're using. And you could design a meta node too, uh, using some of those other techniques I showed uh, for designing the on-off switch. So if you wanted to design a node in order to flip directions, it would be very easy. Uh, there are other nodes you can use. Uh, setting up a math node, you could invert. Uh, the only problem with the math node is we can see it what the output looks like. It's this very harsh, sharp cutoff. And it's not really going to work in this case. Uh, you will find that some operations aren't really going to be a good idea for certain vectors. Now we could also use uh, a vector-based node 
that remains a vector. So if we go to vector operations, uh, one would be the XYZ product. And we could uh, set it to a negative on these axis if compatible. Uh, we could also set up a rotation and twist. Uh, use just the vector product and then connect to another node. Uh, so there are different ways to manipulate it. And if you wanted to modify it further, you could also use the matrix transformation, uh, which will also allow you to use negative values where we can see the X, the Y, and the Z, but also start to add uh, bits of the other directions uh, to some of the other channels. And you can create some very interesting outputs this way. Uh, as you can see, what that did uh, created a very intense uh, normal. Uh, so normal mapping is a, a great new feature. And like I was saying before, if you're going to be using this with uh, view objects, you do need to bake them first. So if, even if I was just to take a cube, and let's go ahead and try to set this up. Output, normal mapping, output. Uh, displace direction, and I'm going to load in uh, just another normal map. And if we were to do this from the material editor, import normal, it'll let you know whether or not the object has UV coordinates. And this is just a very basic normal map. Set it to bilinear. And I'm going to go ahead and create the math node RGB to normal. We can connect those outputs, uh, set up that constant number of zero, connect the bump, and then also connect the displacement, which is all the way over here. Uh, we can see that grayed out, but there's nothing showing on the object. If we right click bake to polygons, now we're going to start to see the normal. So this opens up a lot of possibilities for view. And the fact that the multipass does output, if we go ahead and take a look, under extra components, the XYZ normal, uh, there's even the possibility of rendering normal maps out of view and then mapping them to the objects. Uh, so really some great possibilities.